Okay, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at phloem sieve tubes and the relationship between their structure, as you can see in this pretty little diagram here, and their actual function. So phloem sieve tubes are kind of weird because they're kind of specialized cells, extremely specialized cells. They don't have any functioning organelles that really help them to do anything, but their structure really does help them carry out their function. So if you think about their function, what's the point of these phloem tubes? They're basically tubes to help transport organic substances or sucrose uh, carbohydrates throughout the actual plant organism, delivering sucrose from the source to the sink. And these phloem tubes can actually transport things in two different directions depending upon the hydrostatic pressure. If you're unfamiliar with any of these terms, for example, hydrostatic pressure, please take a look at some of the previous videos or later videos depending on the order that I'm recording these in and uh, you'll get an idea about what's going on there. So let's take a look at a few of the things. So if here if we have a phloem sieve tube, you can see there are these little plates. The sieve, the sieve plate is actually something that helps to strengthen the actual tube uh, to prevent it from breaking down. And there are little holes inside to allow things to actually move back and forth between, to allow the sap to flow in both directions as mentioned here. Lumen is a special term that basically means the empty space inside a tube. You'll see the word lumen is very commonly used throughout a lot of different places in biology. And for example, the lumen of the small intestine is referring to the empty space or the tube inside the actual small intestine. So here, the lumen here has no organelles inside to obstruct the flow of sap. The cell wall is going to resist very high pressure inside the tube. And if you watch some of the previous videos, then you'll understand that sucrose needs to be actively transported in through this kind of co-transporter mechanism. The cell membrane that's lining the inside of the cell walls here actually is just a simple phospholipid bilayer membrane and it actually has a lot of these co-transporter proteins that are necessary in order to move the sucrose in and out of the actual phloem tube. This box is referring to something called the plasmodesmata. These are tiny little kind of uh, cytoplasmic little mini mini tubes that connect the actual phloem tube with something next to it called the companion cell. Uh, it's thought that the companion cell has some of these functions. It probably provides some of the ATP that is necessary for the active transport to take place. Because there are no organelles inside the actual phloem sieve tube itself, it wouldn't make sense if we need ATP in order to actively transport sucrose, there's no mitochondria in here to actually provide that. So most likely the companion cells are the ones that will provide the ATP, uh, the proteins and other substances for the tubes uh, because they don't have the ability to be able to produce some of that themselves. Here's another diagram that shows the structure of the phloem sieve tubes. And then here you can see just a simple reminder, transport of things through the phloem is actually called translocation. The sucrose or organic substances can get moved in two different directions. And so we call that translocation. It's transporting things from the source to the sink or basically places that produce sucrose to places that need actual sucrose as well too. So we've got the sieve tubes. The sieve tubes are in these columns. They have companion cells that are next to them. They're alive, but the nuclei and most of the organelles have actually been broken down and the cross walls that we actually call the plasmo desmata plasmo desmata in the previous slide show how some of the things can move back and forth between the phloem sev tubes and the companion cells that are next to them here's a diagram that shows a cross section between stems and roots and you can actually see my advice for remembering these diagrams if you have to recognize them is think about water being the most important. And in both of these diagrams, if you think of water being the most important, you'll see that the tubes that transport water or the xylem are actually towards the center. So it's just a quick way to remember that, you know, if water is most important, think of it as being the center of attention. So in here, when you have to identify the actual tissues that are involved, uh, the actual tissues that are towards the center are the xylem and the phloem are on the outside. So in a stem structure, the xylem are closer to the center and the phloem are surrounding on the outside here. Even in the roots, uh, in the center, the xylem bringing the water are in the center and the phloem tubes, the tissue of the phloem are, is actually surrounding the actual roots. This is also similar for um, a cross section through a leaf 
diagram, which you don't have to be able to recognize in this particular syllabus, but a cross section through a leaf will show the xylem is on top. So I would be thinking, you know, xylem, water, most important. So water is going to be on the top. Uh, but in these two diagrams, it's sufficient to think about xylem circulating, uh, being in the center, basically, and that is going to help you with the identification of the tissues in these um, generalized cross-section diagrams of xylem and phloem tissue. So here's a few other tips to help you remember some of this stuff. So xylem tissue, phloem tissue, but if you just keep in mind that most of it's centered around the center, then you'll be okay in terms of identifying the difference between xylem and phloem in these cross-sectional diagrams of uh, stem and roots.